time to talk about Daniel Jones again. I feel like every week, every month, probably multiple times a year, I'm talking about Daniel Jones because the Giants fan base and the national media, they just can't leave the guy alone. This is CGF once again. Please uh, like, share, subscribe. 9 24 23, Sunday morning. As you know, the Giants were blown out again last week, last Thursday night. San Francisco 49ers did a number on the Giants, beat the Giants 30 to 12. But I'm not here to recap the game. I'm not here to talk about the game. The game was awful. The Giants lost again. You know, it's tough talking about teams that get blown out, teams that defensively can't stop anyone. You look at the first three games for the Giants, first week lost 40 to nothing. Second week, we're down by 20 points at halftime. He came back, though. Their quarterback, Daniel Jones, led him back to win 31 to 28. Broke all sorts of records, did things quarterbacks have never done before in the league. And then the Giants lose 30 to 12 on Thursday night. So... You may be asking yourself why on an early on a Sunday morning, it's eight o'clock in the morning to be exact on a Sunday, why I'd be online talking about this. Well, I was uh, busy yesterday actually mowing my lawn. Just got a new lawnmower. And I was just like checking my phone as I'm taking little breaks mowing my lawn and going through scrolling through Twitter seeing people comment about Daniel Jones. Apparently, San Francisco 49ers had some not, not not so nice things to say about him. A couple of Giants content creators, I'm not going to mention. One guy in particular who has been doing his show probably for a while, doesn't seem to have many people watching his show, but he has a lot of opinions on Daniel Jones. He thinks he was a mistake. He thinks the Giants shouldn't have spent money on him. I'd like him to um, go take a drive to Cincinnati this weekend, go talk to Bengals fans. You know, right now the Bengals are 0-2. Who's their quarterback? Isn't their quarterback Joe Burrow? You know, their two games, they lost 24-3 to the Browns, 27-24 to the Ravens. Do you think Bengals fans are blaming Joe Burrow for those losses? How about in Jacksonville? The Jacksonville Jaguars were supposed to run away with the AFC South. How are the Jack- Jacksonville Jaguars doing right now? One and one. Trevor Lawrence, supposedly in the next best thing. He's really having a great season. How about the LA Chargers and the Denver Broncos? Denver Broncos have Russell Wilson. LA Chargers have Justin Herbert. Both teams are 0 2. Both teams at this point of the season, are struggling. Both teams have less wins than the Giants. Do you see their fan bases going on their quarterback? Are Charger fans, if there are any, I don't think there are any Charger fans, are they asking for the next best thing to come along? Are they saying, you know, we need to move on from Justin Herbert? How about the Vikings? Minnesota Vikings, Kirk Cousins. What about him? What about Bryce Young, 0-2, Carolina Panthers? Uh, We won't even get into the Arizona Cardinals because they're a mess right now. What about Geno Smith in the uh, Seattle Seahawks? We played them next week. They're 1-1 at this moment. I guess my, my, what I'm trying to say is that I could sit here and I could criticize Daniel Jones. I can criticize this play. I can criticize the fact that the Giants haven't passed except for the second half of the Arizona Cardinal games, two out of three games, they haven't passed for more than 200 yards. I can sit here and blame it all on him. But the truth of the matter is this, and people don't want to listen to this, but I'm going to be honest. Yeah, Jones hasn't looked great mostly during the season. I say if you take out his body of work, you take away that half against Arizona, he hasn't looked good at all. But is it all his fault? Or is it just a media, a fan base, probably about 30% of the fan base who never wanted him in the first place? The same people 
who wanted guys like I don't know who's the who's the flavor of the week Malik Willis who else they wanted Justin Fields quarterbacks come and go okay come quarterbacks come and go but to sit here and to blame one player for a team's issues is crazy. Look at the Giants right now. The big issues with the Giants are coaching, bad game planning, offensive line play, a defense that cannot tackle. Daniel Jones, yeah, Daniel Jones hasn't put up numbers yet. But when you have little time to put up numbers, when I'm talking about the ball snapped to you, you have less than three seconds to pass. And then I'll hear the hear the uh, excuse, oh, Brock Purdy had the same amount of time and he threw for over 300 yards. Yeah, how many yards after the catch were there with those receivers? How many, how many plays did the 49ers break on Thursday night? You know, I, I hate to say I'm right. I, I can sit here and say I'm right, and many times I have. When I did my game preview, I talked about what the Giants needed to do. They needed to run a high-tempo K-gun, no auto offense. And the reason for that is because the Giants will play teams that are superior to them. The San Francisco 49ers is, are, is probably, besides the Dallas Cowboys, second-best team right now in the NFC. And that's no disrespect to the Philadelphia Eagles because the Eagles are right there. But you got to ask yourself, game plan, okay? What were the Giants game plan to do on Thursday night? Were they just trying to survive the game? Were they just trying to be like, okay, we're going to lose this game regardless. Let's not get anybody injured. Because that's what it kind of seemed to me. It seemed like there was a lot of safe plays made by the offense. And the defense couldn't make a stop. So you're going to sit here and blame Jones for that. Jones can't go out there and tackle for the defense. He can't make adjustments. Why was Wink Mark Martindale blitzing 80% of the time? If it's not working, you don't keep hitting your head against a wall. You change your strategy. You tra- change what you do. That's the thing I am most concerned about is that these coaches who we thought, Mike Kafka, Wink Martindale, even Brian Dable to a certain extent, we thought these guys coming in last year, coming into this season, we thought that we had a hell of a coaching staff. And now I'm starting to have some doubts and I don't want to have doubts about them this early. I'm not going to take a page out of everyone's book and throw these guys under the bus. I'm going to give them some time, but the Giants don't have time. That's the problem because every week that they underperform, the voices get louder. The course gets louder. And these people have not gone anywhere. They weren't there last week when Daniel Jones set all sorts of records. They weren't there last season when he beat Minnesota in the playoffs. They wasn't there when he won a critical game against the Indianapolis Colts. They weren't there. They they made excuses. They said he beat inferior defenses. Sure, you could say that, but you still have to perform and execute to win games. I don't care if it's an elite defense, if it's a cupcake defense, whatever it is. And the Giants' problems right now are the same problems that have been plaguing this team for the last 10 years, and that's offensive line play. And there doesn't seem to be, at this moment, any fire or any intent by our general manager to go out and fix those issues. And you may be saying, okay, CGF, what can Shane actually do? And what could Shane do? He has draft assets. He has draft capital. Scan the market, see if there's a better player you can bring in who can help this offensive line. Even from outside of a draft pick compensation or a free agent compensation, signing someone or training for someone, there are coaches out there that the Giants could bring in to help coaching the offensive line because everything is coaching. It isn't just the offensive line, though. This team can't tackle. The basics are lacking. So I guess I could sit here and I could tell you all sorts of stats backing up why I think Daniel Jones is a scapegoat. I mean, yeah, I will sit here and tell you that he can be culpable for some of the stuff himself, but it's one guy and 52 other players on the team. So there's 10 other players on offense. 
those 10 other players have to perform and they have to execute. Cause if it's just one person, it's, it's not going to work. And, but I just, when I told you about the records of these other teams, when I talked about the Cincinnati Bengals, I don't see Cincinnati, Cincinnati fans jumping off the Covington bridge saying, Oh, we need a new quarterback. I don't see that. Why is it just Daniel Jones and why is it just New York? Why does the national media have such an obsession with Daniel Jones? Why? And I keep trying to ask myself that question. Why does the New York media, the national media specifically, what, is, what about Daniel Jones from day one? And, and I'm sorry, there, where's, where's the scrutiny on Justin Fields? Justin Fields has been horrible, but you don't see the scrutiny about him. He was a guy who was supposed to be an MVP this year. He was supposed to lead the Bears to a Super Bowl. I don't see anything on Justin Fields. But there's plenty of stories about Daniel Jones. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. I, I can only tell you this, that the Giants have to start winning games. Daniel Jones has to start winning games. Somehow. I think the Giants have a lot of winnable games on their schedule. Go look at the games remaining on the schedule. They got a game against Dallas that's going to be hard to win. They got two games against the Eagles. And you got two games against Buffalo and Miami. Was that five games? Outside of those five games, do you think the Giants can't win some games? Yeah, the Rams might be a little bit tough. But honestly, what is that? Okay, so you add five losses. That's seven losses. The Giants still have nine winnable games. So 10 and seven gets them in the playoffs. It's a better record than last season. So the Giants should be focusing on winning those games that they can win and focusing towards building towards next season. That sounds horrible to say, but this team's not going to win a Super Bowl right now. They're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. They could probably make the playoffs. But when you're building a like a Joe Judge term, a program, you need to have incremental steps up. But it's not helping when you have 30% of the fan base trying to rip down what is being built. Now, granted, if the Giants go out there and they lay eggs against teams like the Commanders and the Raiders and the Patriots and even the Jets without Aaron Rodgers, then you start to get concerned. If this team ends up this season with five to seven wins, then you start to get concerned. Then you say, maybe, just maybe it was a mistake to extend Jones. I don't believe so. I think he's a good quarterback. But what do I know? What do I know? Because a lot of these same people back in 2006 would have been saying the same thing about Eli Manning. And I hate to use that example, but if Twitter was around, if social media was around to the, to the extent it is today, you can go back to 2005, 2006. You heard a lot of the same narratives about Eli Manning. That Minnesota game that Eli was completely horrible. In. You know, there were people who would go to MetLife Stadium, burn his jersey. Back then, it wasn't even MetLife Stadium. It was Giant Stadium, the old Giant Stadium. They'd burn his jerseys. They'd wear bags to the game. They would make comments, oh, he's not his brother, Peyton. You know, and what did Eli Manning do for us once the Giants got to figure it out? So I guess this is more of a rant this morning. This is not organized. It's just me voicing my displeasure with people because, you know, I tried this year to not talk about other content creators. That's the one thing I really wanted to do this year was to focus on myself because honestly, talking about others doesn't do you any good, gets you in trouble. You make enemies, you make enemies, especially in the Giants Twitterverse, in the Giants universe. You make enemies with the wrong people, you get canceled. And that's, you know, that's what happens. You, if people don't like you, they talk. People talk. So I'm not going to sit here and call out people specifically. I'll try not to do that. But we know who they are. And that's, that's their right. They want to say those things about Jones. They want to say those things about the team. They have every right to say them. The Giants have not been good this year. Neither has Jones. But you would hope there's a little more faith in what we have seen 
the good things we have seen with this team. I guess that's my 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 commentary is that I feel like it maybe it's just in New York. Maybe I've been out in New York City for too long. No, I've been gone from New York City since probably I was about 25 years old. I lived in other places. I lived in D.C. I lived in the Midwest. Spent a lot of time in the Midwest. And maybe, honestly, living in the Midwest has made me soft. Maybe I shouldn't have as much patience as I have. But I understand anything good in life, you have to be patient. It doesn't come right away, usually. So that's pretty much what I got to say this morning. I just had to come on here and talk about it. I mean, if I'm going to go over statistics about Jones, I'm not going to go over statistics because honestly, yeah, you got a good argument. Statistics haven't been really good. I'm concerned. You want to know my concerns? You want to know my unbiased concerns as a content creator about Jones? I've talked about it. If things don't go exactly by script, if things go awry, I have not seen from him consistently the ability to rise above adversity. You want that in your quarterback. When things aren't going perfect, when a key player is down, like a Saquon Barkley's down, there have been instances in his career where he's won without Barkley and he's won without half his offensive line. I think you go back to the Carolina game last year. But there are moments with Jones, I feel, that he needs more of that I guess you could say that swashbuckler attitude where it's like, you know, I'm running with basically electrical tape or masking tape or whatever type of tape that's holding my ship together. I'm going to find a way through this blockade. I haven't seen that at all at times with Jones. Jones also hasn't at times like the second half at Arizona, he led the team back. But I also feel like there's times where Jones loses confidence in himself. And I don't know why I, I'm not the man. I'm not him. I want to see him confident 24 seven. You have to be, you have to believe in yourself regardless. And maybe it's all the noise. Maybe the noise from the outside is getting in. I don't know. You have to just put that shit to the side and just focus on what you need to do to succeed. Or maybe it's just a lost cause. Maybe the Giants are that much of a mess. When a team is out-possessing you two to one, as the San Francisco 49ers were last week, what was it, about 40 minutes to 20 minutes of time of possession? How are you going to win? How are you going to win if your defense cannot get off the field and the offense is stagnant? And what adjustments did Dable make? What adjustments after halftime? What adjustments? He was famously... He got all this credit for the adjustments he made against Arizona. What adjustments did Dable make? I keep asking that question. What adjustments did he make? How do you deal with a superior defense? You obviously have a talent gap. You're obviously missing your, your top offensive lineman. You're missing Andrew Thomas. You're even missing Ben Bredesen, who's improved. Probably you could say Brad, Bredesen is probably the best guard the Giants have right now. You're missing that talent on the offensive line. What are you doing to, what are you doing? These are all the questions you have to ask, but I think we're going to end this for now. Please like, share, subscribe. I appreciate it. But that's my, that's my rant for this morning. It's probably a little different than what other people are saying. I don't care. I'm always going to be honest about the fact I'm a Jones supporter. I always will be. I like the guy. I think he's a good quarterback, but I do have concerns. I'm not going to sit here with rose-colored glasses and say there aren't concerns. There are, but I do believe he's good enough to overcome them. So with that said, that's about it. This is CGF signing out. Enjoy your football day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll be back next week with this week in the NFL.